We've got more delicious designs just for you to see. Check out these bee cherries, but these are 3D. The 3D bee cherries make a great decor items. It's pretty cute. It's a perfect pattern that looks just like the real fruit. A unique project you'll never forget to mention when you want bee designs in the third dimension. This design is great. Although it looks complex, it's fast, fun, and quite simple to make. So let's get ready for this tutorial. To satisfy your creative needs, feel free to give this video a like and enjoy this episode of Turbo Beads. Here's the list of everything you need to make the 3D bead cherries. Before starting this project, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Clubhouse Crafts Thick Elastic Cord. It's an elastic string that works great for pony bead projects and other things. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed, letting you know this is a personal choice, not a sponsored video. To make the 3D bead cherries, we'll start out by taking two feet of elastic string and adding 12 red beads to that string. Once you have those beads on the string, you're going to move those 12 beads toward one end of the string and tie both ends of that string together with a knot, bringing all of those beads together. As you're tying your knot, you'll notice that all of the beads will come together in a semicircle or hexagon. This is the shape that we'll want the beads to stay locked into. To ensure the beads stay in the shape of the hexagon, you'll see here that you can push the beads into place to create the shape. You'll see the pattern here. Every other bead is pushed in as the other beads create the points of the hexagon. Once those beads are in the desired shape, tie both the strings together with a knot to lock all of those beads into place. When tying your string, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Now that your knot is tied and the beads are locked into place, this is what it should look like. From here we'll have one short end of string and one long end of string. We'll keep that short end of string here for later. What you'll do is you'll take the long end of string and run it back through the closest point of the hexagon. So just watch close as I guide the string through this bead. Once you get that string through that bead, you'll pull that string all the way through and this will set us up for the next steps. As you can see, this is what it should look like. So from here, we'll use that long end of string, add beads to that string, and run that string to the points of the hexagon. Let me take the time to show you how this is done so that you can understand what's going on here. As you can see, you'll take the long end of string and you'll add three red beads to that string. Once you have those three red beads on the string, you'll take the hexagon. As you can see, the string is coming out of this point here. We'll run that string to the next bead point of the hexagon. So just watch close as I guide the string through this bead. When you get that string through that bead, let me be sure to mention that you'll want to ensure that your string is well managed. That way, when you pull the string all the way through, it doesn't get tangled up. Let me also be sure to mention when pulling that string, be sure that you pull that string just enough, leaving the beads in a point looking just like this. From here, we'll continue adding beads to that string, creating points around this hexagon. So once again, you'll take that long end of string and you'll add three red beads to that string. Now that you have those beads on the string, you're going to run that string to the next point of the hexagon. So just watch close as I guide the string through this bead. When you get that string through that bead, you're going to pull that string all the way through until the three beads come into a point looking just like this. Let's continue to create more points around this hexagon. Again, take your string, add three red beads to that string. When you have those beads on the string, you're going to run that string to the next point of the hexagon. Again, watching close as I guide the string to that bead. When you get that string through that bead and pull that string all the way through, the three beads that were added to the string will create a point looking just like this. Continue watching as I add more points around this hexagon. Again, we're adding three beads to that string, then running the string through the next bead point of that hexagon. When you get that string through that bead and pull the string all the way through, the three beads that were added will create a point looking just like this. Just be sure to pull the string tight enough so that those beads stay in a tight formation. With this visual reference, you'll see that creating these points around this hexagon should be pretty simple. Again, it's just the same steps. 
adding three beads to the long end of the string and running that string to the next point of that hexagon, pulling that string all the way through until the three beads come together to create a point. Again, just be sure to pull that string just enough, keeping those beads in a tight formation. To create the final point of the hexagon, we're going to run the string to the next bead point, which is this one right here. So let's go ahead and run through the steps once more. As we've done before, you'll add three red beads to that string. Once you have those beads on the string, you're going to run that string to the next point of that hexagon. Watch close as I guide the string to this bead. Be sure to take your time to ensure that you've gone through the correct bead as you're passing to the original starting point of this hexagon. When you get that string through that bead and pull that string all the way through, the three beads will come together to create a point. Just be sure to pull that string tight enough so that those beads stay in a tight formation. With the sixth and final point finished, we'll need to tie the strings together in order to lock the beads into place. So check this out. So what you'll do is you'll run that string through all of the beads that create the point of the star, going back all the way around the star until you've reached the starting point of the original short end of string. So now that you've run the string all the way around that star, getting back to the original starting point, the two ends of string should be adjacent to each other. From here, you can tie both ends of string together in a knot to lock all of those beads into place. As I should mention, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Also, feel free to tie the knot as many times as you feel is necessary. Remember, the objective is to ensure that this star stays together. So once your knot is tied and all the beads are locked into place, you can carefully cut off those tied loose ends of string. As you can see, we've created a six-pointed candy star. This is what it should look like. From here, we'll use the star to form the shape of a cherry. So check this out. But before we continue, I'm just letting you know that I'm using Omniflex 15-pound high-strength fishing line. It's a string that works great with Ponybee designs. With that being said, I'm just keeping you informed and letting you know that this is a personal choice, not a sponsored video. So at this point, what you'll need is one foot of fishing line. In order to turn this six-pointed candy star into a three-dimensional shape, you'll take that string and run that string through every other point of the star. So just watch close as I guide the string through these beads. With this visual, you should be able to see the path I've used when running the string through these beads. This should be clear and easy to follow as it's just running the string through every other point of this star, which will only be a total of three beads. So once you've ran that string through the three bead points, you can now tie the two ends of fishing line together with a knot, which will bring the three bead points together. Let me be sure to mention, when cinching up your knot, be sure that your string is all on the same side, that way when the beads come together, they won't get locked up on the other beads, as you can see demonstrated here. As you tighten up the string, you'll see that the beads will come together. When tying your string together, be sure that it's tied with a knot that's solid and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Now that your knot is tied and all of the beads are locked into place, carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. At this point, this is what the project should look like so far. From here, what you'll need to do is use more fishing line to bring the three bead points together it's exactly as we've done before, taking one foot of fishing line and running that line through those three bead points. Continue watching as I run the string through these beads, giving you a clear visual reference on how this is done. Now that you've ran the string through all three of these bead points, You'll tie both ends of string together with a knot, which will bring all of these beads together. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is solid and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Once your knot is tied and those beads are locked into place, carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. As you can see, we now have this 3D bead ball, which should look just like this. From this point, we'll need to create a stem so that the shape will resemble more like a cherry. This part of the project should be pretty simple, so check this out. What you'll need is one foot of fishing line. With that string, you'll run it through the small gap at the top of this bead ball. 
It's where the knot was tied and the three points have connected. Let me take the time to show you exactly where the string will run through. So just watch close as I guide the string through this gap. Once you get that string to the other end of that gap, be sure to match up both ends of string to ensure that you have the same length of string to use on each side. Now that we have our string all set, what we'll need next is to take one green bead and add it to one end of that string. Once you have that bead on the string, you're going to take that other end of string and run it through that bead as well, going in the opposite direction. With that string through both ends of that bead, coming out of each side, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, which will bring everything together. Let me be sure to mention, when the beads come together, the green bead should sit right on top of the ball where the three points have connected. It should be a perfect fit, but it won't stay in place until we've added more beads and tied it off. So let's go ahead and take another green bead and add it to the string. Once you have that bead on the string, you're going to take your other end of string and run it through that bead as well, going in the opposite direction. With that string through both ends of that bead, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. So now that we have two green beads on that string, let's go ahead and add the final bead. Go ahead and add one green bead to that string. Once you have that bead on the string, take your other end of string, run it through that bead as well, going in the opposite direction. With that string through both ends of that bead, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. Be sure that you pull that fishing line just enough to keep those beads in a tight formation to retain its shape. From here, you'll tie both ends of string together with a knot to lock all of those beads into place. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Once your knot is tied and those beads are locked into place, you can carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string. As you can see, we now have this 3D bead cherry with a stem on top. This is exactly what it should look like. From here, you'll need to make another one exactly like using the same steps as we've done before. Then, we'll combine them together to create a cluster of cherries. So to combine these two cherries together, what you'll need is one foot of fishing line. With that fishing line, you'll run that string through the top beads of each cherry stem. Again, just watch close as I guide the string through these beads. With this visual reference, you should be able to see what beads I've run the string through. Once you have that string through those beads, you'll be able to add three more beads to finish the shape of the stem. So once again, you'll take one end of the string, add one green bead to that string, then you'll take your other end of string and run it through that bead as well, going in the opposite direction. When you get that string through that bead, you'll pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. As you can see, this bead will act as a bridge holding each cherry together. Remember, the beads won't stay locked into place until you've tied it off. So let's go ahead and add more beads to finish out the stem of these cherries. So take one end of the string, add one green bead to that string. Then, take your other end of string, run it through that bead as well, going in the opposite direction. Then pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. With these two beads on the string, let's go ahead and add one more bead to complete the shape of the stem. Again, add one green bead to that string, then take your other end of string, run it through that bead as well, going in the opposite direction. When you get that string through that bead, remember, just pull both ends of the string until you've reached the top, bringing all of those beads together. As I've said before, be sure that you pull the string just enough to keep those beads in a tight formation. Once you have everything looking just like this, you can now tie both ends of string together with a knot to lock all of those beads into place. When tying your string together, be sure that your knot is tied nice and secure to ensure that everything stays locked into place and holds together. Now that your knot is tied and everything is locked into place, all that is left is to carefully cut off the tied loose ends of string and your 3D bead cherries are now complete. And there you have it, another delicious bead design that looks fine and was fun to make. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful and you can create one just as great. If there's anything you would like to add, requests or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you are new or you just haven't already, don't forget that you can always subscribe if you want to be notified for more bead tutorials just like this one. Hoping you'll tune in for the next one to satisfy your creative needs. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching Turbo Beads.